Uh, I'm here today to ask a question. And that question is, why aren't we talking more about justice reform? Prison isn't working. And in fact, according to a report by Her Majesty's Chief Inspector of Prisons, it is getting worse. By not working, I mean that almost half the people released reoffend within one year, according to the Bromley briefings. This, along with the terrible reported overcrowded, overcrowding in prisons and the inefficient spending of our Ministry of Justice, is a reason enough to be having serious debate about the validity of our systems. And yet, very few on the left or the right seem willing to talk about this. Why? Well, firstly, it's an issue that is both divisive and uninteresting. Most people do not intend to become criminals and therefore do not particularly care about their treatment. And those that do are either criminals themselves and so not considered worthy to be included in the discourse, or they believe that retribution should be the primary aim. They believe they deserve all they get, some even being in favor of the death penalty. This last group um, are becoming increasingly vocal, especially in America, where Donald Trump has set himself up as the law and order candidate. This is probably more along the lines of giving the police rocket launchers and making sentencing easier than actually tackling the underlying problems, such as disenfranchisement, racial bias, and poverty. But it's interesting, nonetheless, that this has struck such a chord with the American people, many of them probably seeking safety, fearing terrorism from ISIS, despite most attacks happening in Europe rather than the US, or civil unrest caused by the unprovoked shooting of black people all across America, which certainly won't be helped by giving the police more power. So this is obviously not the discourse that I believe needs to permeate the debate on justice reform, but it's a debate that I certainly think we need to be having, and one that is woefully absent from our Houses of Parliament and radical groups on both sides of the political spectrum. Whilst I don't fully subscribe to Marx's idea that all crime is the fault of a capitalist society, it's certainly a large cause of it. Prison is not class or race representative in this or really any country, and that is an issue that needs to be looked at. Crime is caused by the poor more than by any other groups of people. Recognized crime, that is. I dread to think of the amount of millionaires and big business owners who commit unspeakable atrocities. But um, this is because crime is often the, form of the fault of poverty. If you have no money, you may turn to crime, believing it as a way to make a living and not particularly caring about harm caused to a society that's already rejected you. In this country, some prisons offer services that help to reform, lectures, skills training, or therapy. But this is by no means mandatory, and many prisons, starved for funds as it is, decide that these services are not essential, and so not, do not bother to include them. This is a problem, because it means that when people come out of prison, they are in the same situation they were in when they went in. Argu um, no money, no job, and no prospects. Arguably an even worse one, because they now have a criminal record that will deter employers from giving them a second chance, for fear of losing money or face. This creates a vicious cycle in which you commit crime, get caught, serve your time, and are then released into a worse position than the one you were in before, which then turns you back to crime. I mean, when you actually think about it, the idea of prison is laughable. The idea that if we stick hundreds of people, many of whom hate the state and society that condemned them, all of whom have broken the law, in a big building and generally treat them badly, they'll somehow come out reformed. It's like having a hospital, where instead of doctors and nurses, we have people who blame you for your illness and leave people with different contagious diseases in the same ward and expecting them to get better. It's not going to happen. We need comprehensive reform, both in sentencing and in the treatment of those who've committed crimes, understanding that there are generally deep-seated social or psychological issues that have driven them to these acts. I would propose that prison be reserved for those who've committed physical crimes, such as assault, rape, or murder. These crimes require people to be removed from society because they endanger those around them simply by being part of society. Other crimes we punish with various other punishments, but the staple go-to sentence for crimes such as vandalism or fraud would be community service. This has been shown by the Bromley briefings to be a far more effective form of punishment, with people who were serving sentences of less than 12 months having 7% lower rates of recidivism, which is reoffending for people who aren't using weird words, um, than those having similar sentences in prison, as well as one that actually benefits society as opposed to detracting from it. Now, the community service would include basic tasks, such as litter picking, graffiti cleaning, but it would also, um, the overall aim would be for people within the system to reintegrate into society, as opposed to going further estranged from it. Though inevitably programs would vary across the country, it would be required to include services such as apprenticeships in the civil service, and these jobs would be allocated based on what a careers advisor thought would be good for them, and whenever possible, what the criminals actually want to do themselves. Um, or GCSE or A-level courses, as well as mandatory therapy and restorative justice.
which, uh, when allowed by the victim, which is a program in which the criminal meets those that have been affected by their crime, which gives the criminal and the people hurt by them a chance to reconcile with each other. And it's been well received in the limited number of cases where it's happened. The convicts would be allowed to live at home during this program, though they would be tracked. And if they missed sessions, there would be consequences, including increased sentences, fines, or occasionally, depending on the reasons for the time missed, jail time. Government accommodation would also be available when necessary, as would financial support for these prisoners. Now, this scheme may sound costly, but it would in fact be cheaper than our current system, as this system provides financial aid to all prisoners, as well as housing, in the form of prisons. In 2014, we spent £2.8 billion on prisons. We would be able to decrease this greatly under the new system, though it would probably begin with the same budget until the overall costs were worked out. The other benefits would be that we would end up with productive citizens who contribute to society instead of feeling alienated, as well as increasing the amount of people who want to pay tax in the country, which would further decrease the real cost of the scheme. But this reform isn't only for those on one end of the spectrum. The way we deal with corporate crimes will change as well. For too long have the CEOs of multinationals acted with impunity, allowing the businesses they command to violate human rights and treat the workers in this country like dirt. We're seeing a poignant example of this with Philip Green, ex-CEO of BHS, the man who's responsible for the loss of millions of jobs and the atrocious treatment of those in his employ, and one that will probably escape scot-free, apart from maybe a stripping of his knighthood and a fine. This is not enough for people like him, who will stop at nothing to get all that they can with no regard for how many lives they ruin whilst doing so. These crimes are not motivated by psychological problems, but by sheer greed, and the fact that these people, the real criminals, are allowed to get away with it, whilst those who are imprisoned because they stole from someone because they didn't have enough support from society are vilified, is atrocious. As I've made clear, I don't think that prison is an effective way of dealing with most criminals, and that extends to CEOs and companies. However, I do believe they should be treated a lot more harshly by our system than they currently are. CEOs and board of directors need to be held responsible for crimes committed by their companies and be subject to fines in the millions of pounds and seizing of assets they hold in this country. Companies that do not obey our laws should also face legal sanctions, including potentially being unable to trade in our country for periods of time, should the violations be great enough. So, with everything that's wrong, why aren't we talking more about prison reform? On top of the issues mentioned earlier, Governments don't want to seem weak. They worry that making conditions better for those who have broken the law will make other nations and those in the UK think that they condone this behavior or they are not willing to stamp it out. They want to cling to the old fashioned idea that if you commit crime, then you are evil and deserve harsh punishment rather than help. The primary focus of punishment should be rehabilitation, not retribution. This system would be better for everyone, but as is so often the way, Progressive change is being held back by archaic attitudes and a government more focused on appearance than actual change.